And hello, hello. And welcome once again to a Beatles program, a podcast that we call Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show in which we talk about what's going on news-wise in the world of the Beatles. I'm Ken Michaels, and I'm one of the two co-hosts of this show. Some of you may know me for another Beatles program that I host, which is called Every Little Thing, syndicated around the country and uh, on the Internet, so I could say globally. And I'm being joined by my co-host, the man who writes for Beatles Examiner, and certainly something that has heightened his visibility in recent weeks, the writer for the Weird Al Yankovic Examiner, <laughs> and that being Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everyone. And we finally met. Yay! That that's true. That's, yeah. That's the big that's the big news here, and the big news in the Beatle world is that you and I finally met face to face. That's which right. We will discuss in a few minutes, but yes, that's it. Finally happened. You know, it's kind of ironic. Uh, most people don't even know that since you live near San Francisco, mm-hmm. and I live in Connecticut, we've been doing this show on by phone, a few shows on Skype, and uh, we had never met each other until a few weeks ago. I was actually on vacation for a couple of weeks, and one of the things that I did during those two weeks was I went to see, and we went to see, Paul McCartney at Candlestick Park. Mm-hmm. That was, um, that was pretty, pretty amazing. Actually, we met before the show, we met the night before, mm-hmm. and we went by Candlestick to see the to see what we could see. There wasn't a whole lot we could see that night. Right. They did have the the big sign out in front welcoming Paul to San Francisco that that um, everybody listening probably saw because I ran a picture of it, and I'm, I believe there were a lot of pictures of it uh, on Facebook. And then we tried to make our way. <laughs> To the Cow Palace, which we finally did. It was totally dark. We could barely see it. Hmm. But we did get over there to at least see the Cow Palace. It's kind of interesting that the Cow Palace is maybe two miles at best away from uh, Candlestick. Right. It's that close. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, they are very close. Extremely close. Um, And if I hadn't gotten lost, it would have been even closer. (laughs) (laughs) But no, it was fun. It was fun going over there. I, I, I've I enjoy, well, I've I, I enjoyed seeing I've enjoyed seeing Cal Palace before, uh, in the daytime. What's funny and what we didn't really get to see is that the place hasn't changed one inch since '64. It looks exactly the same. The area has not been, you know, upgraded or anything um, since then. It looks the Cal Palace looks pretty much the same as it did. Hmm. In the day, so but that yeah, that's really kind of interesting that uh, that that happened. So yeah, what I would like to do, and I don't want to get into detail about my entire vacation because it was really a combination of going to San Francisco, to to Cambria, um, and also to Los Angeles, all within two weeks. Mm-hmm. And I would love to just spend a week in each city. And really soak it all in because there's so much to see, especially in L.A. and, and San Francisco. Right. But um, the concert, what did you think, Steve? What did I? Well, oh my God. I mean, that was uh, it was pretty amazing. Uh, it was it was everything I expected, and 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 more even because I was concerned at how Paul looked. I was concerned. I wasn't really concerned at how they would play because I knew pretty well knew that they were going to sound good. But I was concerned about how Paul looked, and and that kind of blew me away. And I was talking with my wife during the show, and we were we were looking at him, and I was going, you know, it's hard to believe this guy was sick. He looked absolutely, positively fantastic. He really he he looked. I mean, all the any concerns that anybody had. I mean, they've long been they've long since been dispelled anyway since the show started up again. But mm-hmm. to see him in person was just astounding. I mean, it was just miraculous how good he looked. He looked fantastic. And also, we should point out, <laughs> we, this was nerve-wracking, the whole process for us both to get tickets. But we we didn't know we actually were going to get in and have tickets. Well, until, the, the, In my case, I didn't even know until... Uh, well, the the concert was the 14th. I didn't know till I think the 11th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was about the same for me. But the the worst part 
was the traffic. Mm-hmm. And as I, uh, you know, I'd, I've written a little bit about this, but all I can say is we're darn lucky we went as early as we did because I personally know someone that I talked to the day after that said that they drove around all night and didn't get in and ended up leaving. Mm. And that would have been, you know, disastrous. And, you know, somebody that was in our party drove around for quite a while who finally did make it in. But, I mean, she had problems, too. So, I mean, it was the traffic was horrendous. And I can't, and I've, I've written about this on the board, but you really have to blame the city here for not planning for this enough. They really did not plan with the parking, with the traffic. They had a good part of the parking lot closed off hmm. when we drove in, which was normal. Which is a normal thing that they would have done back in the day with the baseball games because you know it was all reserved parking. But they still had all that parking closed off. They really didn't have enough parking lots that I could see around the stick. It was really a disaster. It really, in in that respect. And I feel really, really bad for the people that didn't get in because there should not have been a problem. It should have been, you know, there should have been more public transit options and there weren't or more information about public transit options and there wasn't in the local papers and on the and, and on the uh, Internet. And it's, it just seemed to me that there was a lack of planning there as far as that goes. But as far as the show itself goes, the, the, for those who had... Before, for those in the area who have been inside the the stick before, as I have, because I used to go to baseball games, and in fact I was there for the uh, the uh, World Series earthquake game in '89. Um, mm. The place looked great. They really had done a tremendous job in you know making it look really really nice. It looked fantastic. So that was really that was really um, nice. I know they they warned people not to take anything but there were there were people taking grass i mean there were people taking clumps of grass without a problem hmm. nobody got arrested that i saw for doing that i mean obviously if you tried to walk out with a, a seat they weren't going to let you do that but they let people people were walking out with clumps of grass without, without a problem right we saw that at the end yeah hmm. so but, but um, uh, i no, i thought they i thought the show was great i, I they played fantastically they Addition of Long Tall Sally was a wonderful surprise. Um, although no. I think uh, didn't you say didn't do you say something about that or? Uh, yeah, I predicted that he would do that. Yep. And I, I also I also predicted I don't know if I said it in our show, but I had a feeling he would do San Francisco Bay Blues. I I I think we talked about that on the way up uh, the night before, and I said it wouldn't surprise me either because he did it at AT and T um, in. Was it 2010? And I believe he did it last year, or 2011, I can't remember. He did, it was. yeah. And I think he did it last year at Outside Lens, which I did not attend. But, yeah, I mean, I that was probably... Now, it would have been really fun if he had done uh, I Left My Heart in San Francisco. That would have been... <laughs> now, that funny. would have been a surprise. That would have been a surprise. Yeah, He but did not do that. I think I know Paul pretty well. I think he's very predictable to me any, anyway in concerts when right. he'll do something like this, like he did Kansas City in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. You know, he does those things. He'll do Michelle in an area where they speak French. He'll do it in Canada, you know, for right. example. That's what he likes to do. Mull of Kintyre, we've talked about, you know. In and, Canada, right. Right. So I, I really expected both those songs. And Shelley Lazar, who handles the VIP um, seating, for, for Paul's shows and for other artists, too. I know that she requests that song. Right. And, uh, he, and in fact, they showed her on the screen um, at the show, and she was dancing around, and, and so she was very excited about that. She she was very happy that that happened. Mm-hmm. So, Shelley, if you're listening, we, we mentioned you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Shelley could have but, been the reason why we got in, and we don't even know that. That's right. But anyway, uh, so that's what... You know that was the the fun part. Uh, I mean, there were there were, the the show itself was fantastic. You know, it would be wonderful, and it would be um, a big. You know, I think a lot of people would love to hear that show, and it'd be nice if they released it. We don't know that they're going to do that. There were cameras there, 
Uh, there was a, a video crew. Of course, they had they had the video screen in operation. So, and the by the way, the video was just wonderful. I mean, they they did a marvelous job making that uh, you know that you could see everything that was going on, and also the weather was not. I I know I would I had dire predictions about the weather mm-hmm. to you before we went. And I said you know get dressed warmly and stuff, and I had a you know I brought a jacket. And that really, I wasn't sure if I was going to be warm enough, but as it turned out, that was just enough. It was just enough. The weather was was relatively, was it, for candlestick, was pretty good. It wasn't the worst you know, of, of candlestick. Mm-hmm. But it was, I mean, it was it was cool, especially near the end. It started to, to chill out slightly. And I think if you were probably upstairs in the, you know, high up, it was probably... Um, a little nasty, but um, down on the field where we were, it was fine. It was fine. Yeah. Well, I thought it was a little chilly, but I would have <laughs> been—I would have been concentrating on the music. It, it, it wouldn't have bothered me all that much. Mm-hmm. So, but um, I'd like to give you my opinion. Go ahead. <laughs> well, first of all, before I do that, for all the things that I've said here on this show about seeing Paul live recently, and you're listening to my comments because you're on the other coast, and I was talking about Albany. For all the things I said about his voice. Or the band? Mm-hmm. Do you do you agree with what I've said in, in recent shows about this? In what respect? I mean, his his voice sounded great. I mean, his he did not. I was expecting a, a little bit of, you know, of maybe some weakness in the voice, and I didn't I didn't catch it. Um, Long Tall Sally was the was the real kicker there, and I mean, if anything, if if he was going to sound bad, that would have sounded bad, and he didn't. Hmm. He didn't. I thought he sounded great. What do you What do you think? I thought he sounded great overall. I mean, there are certain songs where he struggles, mm-hmm. like "Maybe I'm Amazed," which is real. It's a tough listen for me, especially when you you're so used to the Wings Over America version. And there have been times when he's done the song fine in recent years, but there are times when it, when it, it's a very tough song to sing. There were there were a couple of times during the show when his voice kind of wavered a little bit, but I really kind of put that on. You know the energy of the show, um, and the fact that you know when you're outside, I think it makes a difference as opposed to being inside. And especially, you know, he's uh, up on a kind of a, high, a relatively high stage there. So I, you know, I, I think that has a little bit to do with it. I don't know. Maybe I'm giving him a little bit too much leeway. Hmm. But I know I thought uh, I'm not going to be a real overly critical of the way he sounded. I mean. Had he really sounded bad all the way through the show, then I think I probably would I would be a little more critical. But he really sounded good, uh, and he was in great spirits. Of course, I mean, he was doing the usual stuff with the, you know, let me drink it in, and you know, <laughs> and the shaking his head after live and let die, which by the way had some nice extra fireworks to it that you just kind of dropped your mouth and went, oh my god. But, I think um, it's I think it's the most fireworks I've seen for the song. It could be really, yeah, yeah. But, they really uh, they really added some nice, some some extra extra pyrotechnics there. It was it was fun, hmm. but uh, no, it was a great show and it, it ran about three hours. And getting out was was fun too. I mean, getting in was bad. Getting out was fun too. <laughs> but I mean, getting out of Candlestick has always been bad. It's never been a great place to get out of, um, especially if you park in the lot, as we did. I've usually not parked in the lot. I've usually parked uh, on one of the side lots. But, you know, we got in there early enough to where that wasn't an issue, and we were able to get in right away. So Yeah, we we're very lucky, and, and I have to thank you for helping us out with the, with the ride there. The hotel that we stayed at was pretty close nearby, so we were smart enough to get there early. And, yeah, that's, uh, uh, I'm really, I'm really grateful that, that that all came together because had it not, we would have been in, that would have been a miserable night. But in any event, yeah. Well, anyway, I thought that overall the performance was magnificent. Um, I thought that the band sounded great, and the thing is, this is the first time I can recall. I have to really think hard about this, but I, I had a floor seat. I didn't know where I was going to be seated. I didn't. We didn't know. Both no, of us didn't not. know we if did we were going to get tickets for the show until right before it, it even happened. You know, I had to book a flight to San Francisco for the thir- for the 13th, not even knowing 
if I was going to the concert or not. Mm-hmm. And my wife and I sat about two thirds back on the floor, and I normally don't get to have floor seats, and it's a it's a different experience because I'm used to sitting on the sides. And you get a different angle. And normally what I will do is I'll look a lot at the big screen. I'll bring binoculars sometimes. But, you know, you you because of the way that it's all done on camera, if you look at the big screen, most of the camera time is given to Paul. You don't see as much of the other band members normally. But when you're looking straight on, you get a really full view of everything. And I, I certainly learned to appreciate this band a little bit more than I normally would because I got to see some things that I normally wouldn't have seen. So one of the things that I noticed, first of all, uh, I saw a lot more guitar work from Rusty Anderson than I normally would have seen. He was very li- Did you notice how lively he was? He was dancing. He was making faces at the video screen. I've never seen him do that before. I didn't see that part. I was kind of watching his guitar work. <laughs> no, he was making faces uh, at the at the video screen because I noticed that a couple of times. In fact, I pointed that out to my wife. I said, "You see what he's doing?" And she, I guess she missed it too. I must have been the only one who saw it. No, oh no, actually, I was pointing it out to somebody else that was sitting with us. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, he was making faces. He was having a great old time. Mm. Uh, as was Brian. Brian too. Um, but uh, um, but definitely Rusty. I've never seen Rusty that lively before so he was having he was having a blast okay well i'll have to watch if this video is on youtube from the concert i'll try and mm-hmm. zero in on that but in particular there's um there's one song another day where rusty does a lot of guitar work that i wasn't aware he was doing during the song because paul just strums the chords but rusty's doing most of the the other parts of the song mm-hmm. on guitar there and it was really nice just to see that closer and having a straight angle just looking dead on at it right um also hearing abe laborial's harmony so much more i heard much more being in the center on the floor than i would have on the sides and you can really hear mm. how good his harmonies are I, that, uh, I, that i did not notice you noticed that uh, that's not something i noticed yeah and the other thing is and um you know one of the things that that i love about seeing paul and it's also frustrating at the same time is that He is a really good lead guitar player, but he doesn't show it off enough. And one of the moments when he does do that is at the end of the show when they're trading off solos on the end. But I really appreciated this time out when they go from Let Me Roll It into Purple Haze, and then they do this jam there, and it's all instrumental, and it's all Paul you know, doing this lead guitar stuff. Mm -hmm. And it went on for quite a while in this concert. And I'm seeing this more, more a straight angle, looking right at him, doing the lead guitar stuff. And I just mm-hmm. wish he'd do more of that. So it's more like a teaser. <laughs> I wish he would do more lead guitar work on stage, definitely when I see something like that. But um, certain songs just sounded fantastic. Let It Be, I think, sounded amazing. It's one of the, it just seemed like a perfect version of, of uh, Let It Be. But the one thing that I will say about the show that I think is going to shock you, because I deliberately didn't tell you this okay. after after the show, this is probably the tamest audience I have ever witnessed at a McCartney <laughs> show. I don't. I just feel like there was no buzz in the audience up until when he did "Let It Be," when he went behind the piano, when he did when he did "Let It Be," uh, "Live and Let Die," and then "Hey Jude." I don't think the crowd was that into the show. I, it's just my own personal reaction. And then even after the concert, I turned to my wife and I asked her, and she said the same thing. So it's not like we were trading this off each other during the concert. Right. But um, I'm used to the East Coast, and usually the crowd's much more enthusiastic. There's usually a very high buzz. When, when you know, Certainly when Paul comes out, everybody's excited. But for most of the songs that he played through the first half and longer, I just didn't feel this excitement. Yeah. I, I kind of felt like people were going to this. Obviously, it's because it's Paul, but because of the history behind it, because it's the last concert at Candlestick Park, it's because where the Beatles played. But, you know, you're there, at least for me, I'm there mainly to see one of the greatest artists of all time perform. That's more important than the history behind Candlestick Park for me. That's always going to come first. But it was more an event, I think, for that reason. You might be, you might very well be right because, yeah, there definitely was a, seems to, seemed to be a quiet among the crowd. Um, maybe it was a, a very big VIP crowd i mean i didn't personally and that was funny i you know i was looking around for people i didn't really notice anybody 
come you know coming in. I'm bad at that anyway. I never you know I never recognize anybody. There were a few VIPs there. The the governor of California was there for one. Right. Um, Jerry Brown, who I did not see, but uh, um, somebody else told me they he sat right in front of them. So um, you know there was. Yeah, there were VIPs there, um, but um, I don't know. Maybe that was a large part of it. I'm sure there were a lot more VIPs than just the ones I heard about. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, you're right. It was a. It seemed to did, did seem to be a subdued crowd. And I'm not sure why that is. But see, I I've been questioning why, and I don't know if it's because of the fact that he played San Francisco a year before. Maybe it wasn't as exciting because he just played in in the town. Uh, or because of, like I just said, it was more of an event than mm. seeing than seeing a legend up there, you know, one of the greatest artists of all time up on stage. It was more because of the circumstances around it, the last concert at Candlestick Park, and it's one of the Beatles doing it. And, um, you know, there are people who want to go to shows because of the significance of it, more so than the importance of the artist. And uh, it's just like when I go to casinos. And there's a lot of people who go to see concerts there who don't really care that much about the concerts. They're there because it's the event of the night or because they're trying to impress somebody, their date or whatever. Right. Sometimes I get that experience. So I'm there always first and foremost for the artist. And the only problem I had with this, and, you know, Paul is human. I think he feeds off the audience. And he knows when he's getting a good reaction to his music. He watches these things. And there were times when I think he just didn't, he, he, he wasn't as free at talking on stage and doing his patter as he normally does. There's always the things that he says in every single concert that we know. But if he wanted to ad lib, he kept it really short. I, I in a way, I kind of disagree with you because I, I mean, he say, he did say, the usual stuff like, you know, uh, drink it in, and he did that. And he, you know, like I said, he covered his ears after living with die like he always does. And he seemed like he, he seemed like he did that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he was, maybe he was aware that this was an event. He was, and, and who knows, maybe, may, and I, and I underlined the maybe because we have, I'm just guessing here, maybe there is something going on with this show that we don't know about. And he was keeping it kind of subdued for that reason. Hmm, that's possible. We'll have to wait and see. Right. So, but uh, but again, we don't we don't have any clue about that. There's been no. They would not, you know, they would not say. Um, there were there was a there were cameras there. There was a, a film crew. You know, there was a. In fact, that one guy on the uh, you know on the camera there going back and forth. Those. I don't know that those uh, images appeared on the screen. I wasn't really paying attention, hmm. but there was there was some camera work being done there. So who knows? We don't we don't know. You never know for what it could be used. It doesn't have right. to be just the, the concert at Candlestick Park. It could be well, a yeah, compilation yeah. of uh, music uh, of concert videos from right. Paul. Right. He it's, basically he he basically does you know he he does a uh, little film of just about every show anyway and posts it on his website. You know, and, and you know, does a, uh, you know, a we were here type of thing, and so they they do film. So, but what's going to happen beyond down the road, we don't know. So. Yeah, I just kind of felt in one particular moment um, when they're about to do Queenie Eye, and Paul is actually about to tell the story of what it's all about, mm-hmm. which he hasn't done at least when I've seen him in concert. He said it in interviews. But he doesn't. He hasn't brought it up on stage. Right. So he's just talking about the fact that it was a kids' game. They used to play with a ball, and but he kind of sends that. I'm not going to drag this out. I'll keep it short and simple and go right into the song. <laughs> so, you know, I was kind of surprised that he brought up that he was going to give a little backstory, some kind of Queenie Eye, but he didn't elaborate because I, I just kind of felt like, you know, he wasn't that comfortable on stage when it came to talking. The performance of the songs were incredible. They were mm-hmm. great. Nothing taught, n- nothing affected that. But it's just when he had to talk on stage. Right. right. He said some things like, uh, you were a cool audience back then, during the Beatle years, you're a cool audience now, we're going out in style, all that stuff. But uh, that that was great. It was short and to the point. And, and, they, and they definitely did. The, the uh, highlight, of course, was Long Tall Sally, where they had the, the unreleased Jim Marshall pictures. 
um, on the backdrop, which which really kind of caught me by surprise because I was sitting there watching them and I didn't it didn't hit me. Well, actually, I didn't realize it until the next day when they sent out the information. But I realized that you know as as they were going through the pictures that you know some of those pictures I don't I don't know that I recognize some of those. And it turns out you know they had arranged to get some unreleased pictures for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, sh- for that song, but boy, I'll tell you—I mean, that was just—that was a nice—that was a nice little uh, tribute there. Right. And one other thing is that I really—I was really getting into the media coverage of the event because I was watching TV early in the morning. It was the number one story. Mm-hmm. Come and see Paul. He's doing—he's he's closing Candlestick Park. There's all kinds of stories. Said they even made up. They—they they said that Paul is doing a new set list. <laughs> Well, it was a couple of songs that he changed, but that was it. But um, they even had this story about this guy named Bob Freeman or Robert Freeman, and I immediately thought of the Beatles photographer. But it was a guy who was a vendor who who's actually was going to work that night at Candlestick Park, and he was also a vendor when the Beatles played Cow Palace 50 mm-hmm. years ago. So 50 years apart, and it's the same job, which is a great story to itself. Sure. So... You know, that they really covered the event well in the media. I mm-hmm. will give them lots of credit for that. And I was excited about that, that it was the number one story. Yeah. Everyone's talking about it. All the newscasters are excited about it, like they all want to go. So I love watching that. Yeah, it it, uh, it took a couple of weeks for it to finally, to really pick up. But, yeah, it def- definitely around the end it got it got to be the big story around here. So. Mm-hmm. But there is other news. There is. There is. I don't know. Um, well, actually, there's, <laughs> you're there's, the newsman here. I know. There was one thing that happened today is that Paul pushed the reissues back to November, the wings at the speed of sound and Venus and Mars back to November. Mm-hmm. Apparently, there are production production issues. Right. We don't, and we don't know what they are. But um, it's that been... was an interesting little interesting little note that that uh, happened today. Another thing is that I wrote a story with the name of the new Diana Krall album. Name, yeah, with the name of the new Diana Krall song, uh-huh. or the new song that Diana Krall is going to do. And it's called "If I Take You Home Tonight." Right. So, which will be on Diana Krall's new album Wallflower. called "Wallflower." Yeah, and that's out due out October, October twenty fourth. Twenty fourth, and for those of you that are into bonus tracks. Uh, Amazon has a bonus track version uh, with four bonus tracks, one of which is In My Life. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to hear her do that. Yeah, and actually, for those that don't know about this whole thing with the McCartney song, that's a leftover track from Kisses on the Bottom. Right. So I love the two songs, the two original songs that Paul did for Kisses on the Bottom. Mm -hmm. So this is another one from that whole time. Right. So, because uh, Diana, Diana and her band were very much were on the album, they were all over the album. So, mm-hmm. um, and she was in the video. So, yeah, that's going to be a, that's going to be a lot of fun. Right. And I love. I have to. Diana has become my one of my favorite non rock and roll singers. She's fantastic. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to that album. As I know you are. As I as I definitely am. Okay. So that puts a wrap on this show, and if you'd like to get in touch with us, there's a very easy way to do so. We have an email address, which is, tell them, Steve. It's things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. Right, and I have my own email address, everylittlething at att.net. You can also catch me on my Facebook page at Ken Michaels and on my website, kenmichaelsradio.com, and you'll find a ton of interviews with people who are in some way connected to the Beatles on there, and weekly trivia on the website and if people want to get in touch with you directly steve they can do so how they can uh email me at beatles examiner at gmail.com look for me on facebook under my name or under my column uh and of course on i'm on Be- the beatles examiner page and the palm cardney examiner page and several other examiner pages including the weird al yankovic examiner page mm-hmm. on examiner.com which i'm sure is where you're getting the most traffic I'm actually, it's it's doing pretty well, actually. Well, good. Thank you, especially after we was on the Emmys the other night, which was pretty uh, pretty uh, trippy. But oh well. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 
This has been great, talking about the Candlestick Park Show. I'm Ken Michaels, thanking each and every one of you for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying thank you for listening. We are back. I know a couple of people were asking where we were, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>